excellent for inflammation. Okay? Cayenne, applied externally. You can take some olive oil and put some cayenne in it or almond oil. Is that my phone? Yeah, it might be that. Yeah. Okay. You can take some cayenne and mix it with almond oil. They say if you use olive oil, olive oil kind of dries your skin out and it absorbs easily. But like grapeseed oil or almond oil, I heard almond oil is excellent. Coconut oil. You mix it with that and you can rub it. Cayenne is great for anti-inflammatory. Because you know what? You know what causes inflammation? What does inflammation equal? Inflammation, this is all inflammation is. It equals blockage. Did you guys know that? Inflammation is blockage. When you have something inflamed, there's blockage to that vessel. And the blood carries the oxygen to every tissue, cell, organ in the body. When that blood is not properly getting transported there and delivered and distributed there, there's a lack of oxygen in that tissue. Lack of oxygen equals pain. That's why you get off the tap. Because there's no, it's not because you just have a heart attack that you're having pain. You're having a heart attack because you're having the lack of oxygen, which causes the pain because the blood is not getting to that tissue. So inflammation is blockage. Now, we'll talk about water treatment in just a moment. Okay? Honey is great for inflammation. One tablespoon a day, two tablespoons, you can put it in tea. Cherries, they say about a quarter to half a pound a day if you can eat that. Even I've heard as little as six cherries. Now, we're not in the cherry season, so you can get the frozen cherries. You can, there's some good canned cherries that don't have the sugar and stuff added to it. Cherries are excellent anti-inflammatory. They have an ingredient in them that is the same ingredient in aspirin. By the way, yes, you're saying it right, salicylate. Okay, cherries. You know, I noticed too for me, grapes. Grapes, oh, okay. Wow. Now, does anyone know what is the common medication that they use for arthritis and inflammation? Um, Ibuprofen. Do you know what that stands for? No, non steroidal. Anti-inflammatory drugs. You know what these are? Tylenol. Ibuprofen. Ibuprofen. Motrin. Aspirin. Some they use that sometimes too. Um, Motrin. Are these common over-the-counter medications? Mm -hmm. Do you know what these cause? What they cause? They have major side effects. Yes. Bleeding. Mm -hmm. Ulcers. Um, kidney damage. Uh, ulcers in the stomach. Tinnitus, ringing in the ear. There's so many side effects. But this is what they're using to treat inflammation. And then they use other things as well. They use a lot of steroids. <coughs> if a person's on steroids, you cannot tell them to get off of them right away. Oh, and they're finding out that these items that I just listed are causing many of these diseases that they're using them to treat. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Okay, what else? One third cup of cranberries. Now let me ask you, everything that I've listed up here so far, what is it? My base. It's food. Isn't it food? It's food. One third of cranberries each day times three weeks. Now, a lot of these remedies are for medical missionary workers who've been doing this work for 30 plus years. Well, see, and 
what could be good for one person may not be good for the other. But there's so many things that you can do. You can pick and choose. And the more you can do, the better. Lemon juice. A whole lemon squeezed in water. Remember we talked about rheumatism? Well, what do you think rheumatoid arthritis is connected? Is it not? Yes. Why is it that lemon juice will help inflammation? What causes inflammation? Blockage. Right. It, well, well inflammation is blockage. Toxins. That's not what causes it, though. Toxins. You ever heard of this word? What's that word? Free radicals. Right? What kills free radicals? Antioxidants. Antioxidants kill free radicals. Um, is lemon juice high in antioxidants? Yes, vitamin C. And remember we're talking about the facilitators to counterbalance? I do love vitamin C power, and I will use it in severe cases. And I know people who've taken 68,000 milligrams a day of the pure powder when they were crippled for three years in a wheelchair from arthritis. And when they started taking 60 and 80,000 milligrams a day, they started walking and all their pain was gone. <coughs> but my thing is, do you want to be a slave to taking that much every day? It can get costly. But lemons are not that expensive. Do several lemons a day, squeeze it in water. All right? We're almost finished here. So lemon juice. Um, remember this quote, I use lemon juice freely. It is the best thing you could use for rheumatism, for your head, and for malaria. And that's Second manuscript release, page 48. What about this? Remember that? We've heard of that, right? You take the big, get the big pretty cabbages, the one that have the leaves that are like this, not the one that's had the outer leaves taken on. Beat it with a meat tenderizer. Put it where they're having the inflammation. Wrap it with an ace bandage and leave it on overnight. Yes? I've done that. Did it work? Yes, it did. Amen. Prior to that, I had uh, major pain in my knees. Okay. Every step that I took, okay. I did that when I like seven years ago. Okay. Since then, I haven't had any pain. Amen, because there is an ingredient in the cabbage. And what it does is it draws out the inflammation through the skin, literally. I tried it on my aunt also when I went to Monroe, and she used it immediately, and it worked like Amen. a charm. Amen. Amen. <laughs> wonderful. Okay. A hot castor oil pack. This is anti-inflammatory. This is something that should be in every medical missionary bag, castor oil. This is stuff is great. If a woman has breast cancer and she's in pain, do a pack, put it over, pain is gone within minutes. You saturate the cloth, stick it in a glass dish, put it in the oven, and heat it. If you need it immediately, you can microwave it after you saturate it. I'm not into the microwave too much, but you work with what you have as quickly as you can. Okay, now, remove. What am I going to say? It starts with a capital S. Twenty percent of inflammation is due to stress. Because your body releases steroids, your adrenals, stuff takes place in the body because of stress when it's under pressure, and it will cause inflammation. For those with gout, there's a remedy. You can get some vinegar. You can get some apple cider vinegar, regular vinegar, heat it up. And you can put the foot, or you can put a rag in there and put it around the area that's in pain. But for gout, if you stick the foot, you use the acid to get rid of the acid that's in the toe. Just like you can use sugar on diabetic ulcers externally, and that will heal the, the sore. Isn't that amazing? Go on a low purine diet. There's a website on here that talks about the purine diet. 
eat cherries and cranberries. That's for those who have gout. And many medications that lower blood pressure also elevate the uric acid level. So a lot of people who go on blood pressure meds, they wind up getting the gout because of the high levels of uric acid. That's what gout is, high levels of uric acid. Okay, so did we get all the remedies? Very simple, isn't it? Not hard stuff at all. Does anyone have any questions? Any questions? You have a question, brother? Yeah, I have several of them. Okay, ask. The, the nightshade food. Okay. Now you're saying, are we supposed to not eat these? Don't eat them. If a person is a 100% plant-based eater, and they're not eating vinegar, and they're not eating any of the sugar, and they're not eating any preservatives, additives, no cantarian food, nothing like that, and they're 100% plant-based, and they're still suffering from uh, arthritis, in most cases, they won't. So, But 5 to 10%. So the primary focus was, we do away with these products because we have some type of arthritis, so, etc. Inflammation. Right. Yes, inflammation. If but the person it, is suffering, as, as far as just eating them, say like if I like to eat eggplants. No, it's not going to cause inflammation. Right. But there's an ingredient called solanine in these that can flare up. It can exacerbate the inflammation. So if a person is suffering from it, those are foods you want to take them off of. How long can you keep uh, black scrap molasses when you like, purchase it that's in the jar and you opened it? And do you have to store it in a, um, a certain place once it's opened and you, you know, close it? Can you I've just kept it on my shelf all So time. you can keep it? Yeah, and there's an expiration date on it, I'm sure, but I've kept mine. Well, if you use it as often as you're supposed to, it doesn't hold. <laughs> no, 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 no. It doesn't last long. You said you had a few more questions. Ask away. Well, uh, I can't even think of the question. Please, this is what the time is I, I, I understand that. I understand that. Because, oh, oh the other question was, I just didn't write it down. Now, uh, are any of these uh, authorized hereditary? Oh, here's the thing. We learned a few weeks ago, a lot of these diseases are hereditary. But, that, but remember, hereditary only loads the gun. Lifestyle is what pulls the trigger. Okay. And so the Prophet of the Lord tells us in Ministry of Healing that many children are products of their parents, of, of the way the mom went, she ate when she was pregnant and stuff. So what the child is supposed to do is see the wrong things the parent did, don't do those things, and then the child will go Okay, if you can't think of it now, you can just send me an email. Did you want me to add you to the health committee group? And I thought you it? did. No, I didn't yet, brother. I did. Is that what you'd like? Yeah, I thought I, thought I was. I just haven't checked the email. Okay. I my well, I did send you some emails because you asked me to, but I'll, I'll put your name so that I make yeah, sure I send I, it to I'll you. I'll go ahead and start checking. You, you, yeah, go ahead because then I got to get in. I got to get out of my own. Any other questions? I need to go back and uh, Okay, email. brother Arsenal, would you mind praying? Okay. I'll pray for us. Yes. Dear Lord in heaven, we thank you so much for this day. And as we go home, Lord, I ask and pray that you be with us and keep us safe. Thank you for everything that you've given us. And thank you for a beautiful Sabbath day. In Jesus' name, I ask and pray these things.